Okay, so um, this painting here, I uh, used a reference, and the issue here is that you have used the reference. Fuck. But. Damn it. Fuck. <laughs> uh, but you haven't. Um, you've copied the reference as a source of information for the anatomy to sort of guide you along the face and guide you along the painting. But. What's happened here is that you've copied it without copying the light environment. The light environment in this photograph is entirely black. There's one light source. There is no diffuse light source. And the entirety of the form outside of the areas that are touched by the light source, the light spots of the nose, um, on switch, on this side, the chin, the upper lip, the milk mustache, uh, the cheekbones, all these areas are lit up as they should be um, according to that one light source. But everything else is flooded in darkness. You have not done that. And that's the biggest mistake you have done here. Um, the second biggest mistake, of course, is one uh, collection of mistakes, which is copying the face properly. Um, if you look at this face right here, you can see that the eyes are not that small, and I've talked a lot already about masculinity. You can still have a pretty boy. This guy's a pretty boy, but he still looks very masculine because he's got all the features, but his eyes aren't really that big. And the way you drew them, you kind of made it seem like the eyes are very, very large. Um, also, the bone structure is uh, not imitated properly. I think you lost, you didn't know what to do with this side because of the darkness that was here. So you were trying to bring in a light environment that was lighter than what we have here. And so because of the lack of, I guess, info here, because of its flooding in the black, um, you didn't know what to do with this side. But this definitely needs some work. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to copy, let me get this on this side here. I'm going to try to copy this guy's face with the liquify as much as I can. So his eyes were much darker, and the way you drew the nose was very, very large compared to the painting. His nose is pretty big, but, I mean, it's not that big. <clears throat> and whenever you put the arch of the brow, think about the edge of the face, where that edge of the face happens. Whenever you do the, whatever you do to this side, you got to do to the other side. He also has a very intense bone structure, so and very masculine as well. So what you need to do, let me just shrink his nose. What you need to do is push out his cheekbone, and then push in his cheek. Because that's kind of the kind of face he has. And he has a very, very strong, very, very strong chin, so we need that in there. And it's starting to look like him almost immediately because these are just the male signifier. This is this is the stuff you see in males consistently. They have that very pronounced, not feminine thing that makes them, you know, attractive. <laughs> these are like the beauty the beauty rules. So I know that your response could be, well, I didn't want to copy him perfectly, but what were you copying then if you weren't copying him? You have a reference that you're imitating, and you don't have a pool of knowledge in your visual library that can replace what you're not copying directly. So when you're this early in your painting process, and you're this early a student, and you're not yet, you know, on the advanced uh, train, I guess, um, you got to copy completely. you got to really trust your reference. And copy your reference because that's the source of information you're going to be using to fill your visual library up with valid, real-to-life proportions and anatomy. And if you skip that, what will happen? We skip measurements. You're, you're going to record a different kind of face. You're going to record wrong. The face you're going to record is going to be an in, in, inappropriate, not inappropriate, improportionate face. So before after. When we paint photographs, when we imitate from photographs, we basically are showing the world what we can see. What we see and what we don't see. You don't see a lot. There's a lot you don't see and a lot that you do see. But you gotta keep trusting your portrait that you're imitating. I keep trusting the reference because you have to, it can't just be that one time that you try that reference. You have to try it over and over and over again until you record it properly, until what you see becomes very close to what's in the photograph. Now this is not me saying look at your reference and then put it away and then try to see how much you remember. No, you, have, you can have the reference right beside you and you can still be blind to some stuff in there. 
And the stuff that you can't see or you don't imitate properly, for instance, the bone structure of the face, you, you made the face very wrong, you painted the face very wrong, um, you didn't see that because there wasn't enough foundation knowledge about bone structure and skeletal structure that if you were to see it in a reference, you read it. Can anyone explain to me what I mean when I say what you read in references? What, 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 what are you reading, really? What do you see in references? Can anyone try to answer that? Put my Sirac cherry today. Popped my Sirac. Oh, God. Can you not do that, Phantom? <laughs> um, the structure, value. It's not something specific, it's all of that stuff but it's not something specific. When I say, when we read our references, what are we, well, yeah, we're reading that stuff, but what does it mean when we're reading our references? It's filtered through the visual library. Reading the form. Wide range of van values, bone structure, thanks to shadows in the skin face. We're reading all of that. You guys are all right. Sticker for all of you. Um, a for effort. E for effort. I don't know. I don't know why they say A for effort. It's supposed to be E, right? Because you're supposed to duplicate the first letter. Anyways, proportions like colors if it isn't black and white. Planning ahead. When I say when we read our references, I mean that have what we read in our references, if you have two people work from the same reference and they both draw a different drawing, what happened? That's what I mean. What happened with that, that these two people drew the different a different painting? And they drew a different face entirely. Different artists have different development in their library and their vocabulary of art. So all of that stuff that you guys listed, value, structure, form, um, anatomy, shapes, um, all of that stuff is different between every single artist. So when you imitate a reference, when, you, when you're working with a reference, um, you are copying down what you know only. Stuff you don't know, you won't read it. That's what I mean when I say reading your references. Stuff you haven't yet been, int been introduced to. Let's say you haven't yet been introduced to value scale. Let's say you haven't been introduced to something very specific here. Cast shadows. You will not draw a cast shadow. Even though it's right there. You don't see it. You're blind to it. That is a very, very scary, scary thing. And I am afraid right now of the things I don't see when I look at references. What don't, what don't I see that an art, another artist that's better than me sees? It frustrates me because I won't see it unless I work on a reference for hours and hours and record everything perfectly. It's stuff that comes from anatomy and bone structure and skeletal structure. It's stuff that comes from form. All of that stuff that you don't see is knowledge stuff. It's not technique stuff. Because you're looking at a reference. You're looking at something from the real world. You're not really looking at photo photographic techniques or photography techniques. You're only looking at knowledge. And what you don't record is what you didn't see. What you're blind to. Isn't that scary? Um, they draw how they perceive it. Exactly. Um, and what you don't see is what you don't draw. And the mistakes that you made is a perfect example of what you didn't, what you didn't see, and there's a lot you didn't see here. You didn't see the the male, um, the, the, the ogre. You didn't see the elf in the in the in the painting too, because how close his lips are to his nose, that's very elfish. But the way you drew it before was very distant. You gave him an extra level of like non-elf, non-beauty. And then we have the eyes and what you didn't see in the symmetry there. And then we have the cast shadows of the eye brow on the, on, on the, on the eye itself, so the cast shadow of the eye socket. That's a massive thing. So there's a lot about cast shadows you haven't seen yet. So how do we, Istabrak, how do we tackle what we don't see? How do we make it easier? How do we make our lives easier when we're working with references? Plan like a motherfucker. You have to sit there and be ready and, and be okay with the fact that you might be sitting there for an hour and a half just planning your reference, meaning get your reference and this is okay because at this point you're, not, you're, you're a scientist and you're experimenting with science, you're experimenting for science so it's okay if you trace I am right now telling you all and you can quote me and whoever tells you 
You're not allowed to trace. Say, no, Isabrak, let me. You can trace. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? Some people, there's like this horrible, terrible taboo about tracing when it comes to... I mean, if you're Craig Mullins, why do you even need to trace? <laughs> like, if he traced, and would be like, oh, wow, he's tracing. Well, you know, like that, that gives us some hope that, you know, we can possibly draw that good um, one day if we also traced. But it's different because he doesn't trace. Um, I think he does, a little bit. Um, but for us, because we're students... I mean, it's like saying to a person who's in physiotherapy, you can't use crutches, that's cheating. Well, I'm still learning how to walk. Okay, I'm still recovering. You guys are still learning. You guys are still in the process of educating yourselves and growing. And you need growing tools, growth tools. So you are okay with tracing. Please trace. For the love of God, trace. But don't trace like this. The only thing wrong about tracing is this. Please watch. Okay, I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw this here, and I'm going to trace this, or just like that, and I'm just going to fill in the lines. I'm going to color in these lines later. These lines, I'm going to color them. I'm going to color these lines. This is going to be good, and I'm going to pretend that I didn't trace so my friends can be jealous of me. Oh yeah. This is not right. You don't do this. This does shit for you. All right? This does nothing for you. When you trace, you're basically tracing the the guidelines. I want meaning I, when you trace properly, you're tracing guidelines. When I trace, if I ever need to for a reference or something like that, I trace like this. What the fuck. Okay? This is the first and most important line that I create. This is the symmetry line. When you are working with a reference, the first and most important thing to trace is the symmetry line on the face. Is that how you spell symmetry? I don't give a fuck. Line on the reference. Two, the axes, the major axes, the major points of the distance, the distances. So we're talking like this is how high it'll go. This is how far it'll go, and this is how far it'll go here, and this is how low it'll go. These are really, really important lines to pick up. Because it'll mean that you're not painting all the way up here. It'll mean you won't throw the, the, the reference off. So the major axes. Um, is it A-X-E-S? I don't care. All right. Three, the horizontal lines that need to be traced no matter what. You can make them straight. Or you can make them curved, like if the person is looking up, this person's looking pretty straight. The photographer did a very good job of that, um, so that these lines are pretty much straight. There's no major tilt in perspective, so his eyes aren't really looking down, and we don't see part of his nostril. We see a really, really good leveled portrait, um, where it's like a 90 degree angle. Um, and uh, so that's, that's the next part, horizontal lines. Lines, sorry. <laughs> And four, pretty much the thing you feel like it is going to be the most difficult for you. So it could be, the four could be stuff, anything that might help you. For me, what I usually do, if I need to trace, is I will trace out the cast shadows. Because this is your way of reminding yourself that, hey, look, this is not a contour and this is not a blended color. This is something that's happening because there's one object, A, in front of second object B and there's a light and this object standing in the way of this light accessing this object meaning it will project its shape and dimension onto this object as a shadow that's a lot of physics to remember that's a lot of rules and that's very difficult to remember when you're in there trying to deal with your reference so this is something that I really look out for I don't trace anymore I used to um, when I was learning I don't trace because now I see it so my vocabulary is is um, is familiar with these rules. I look out for them. In fact, these are the things I look for first, the cast shadows, because they make the image read immediately. It's very amazing to capture these. The next thing you could do, so this could be number four for you. For me, it's cast shadows. It could be something else for you. It could be the highlights. So you could be doing something where you remind yourself, hey, bro, this is going to be the high point. Please don't make anything else as bright as this. Thanks. That's you telling, talking to yourself. 
So you're like, okay, well this big chunk over here is highlights. We've got this bit here as highlights. We've got this bit here as highlights. This. This is proper tracing. I just spat, sorry. <laughs> um, this is proper tracing. This is what tracing, you can't go in there and trace the line because why? Why is it wrong to do this? I want, I want an answer right now. Why is it wrong to do this? Can anyone tell me? <coughs> Excuse me. You can trace this to Rack 2015. <clears throat> uh, I trace to save time. Is that cheating? As long as you're learning, it's not cheating. Listen, tracing is a tool. It's like saying, hey, if I use a pencil, am I cheating? A pencil is what helps you record. It's like, hey, it's, um, if I use a compass to, to, to draw a circle from my geometry class, um, is that cheating? Or, or for my architectural blueprint, is that cheating? No, it isn't. It's a tool. It's a fucking tool that's going to help you draw better and record better and more record a more uh, trustworthy, um, not trustworthy, a more accurate, um, trustworthy, I'm fucking stupid, um, a more accurate uh, rendition of that object that you were looking at. So by all means, trace, but trace properly. You have to use the tool properly. You can't go in there, trace, fill in the colors. You know, you know those little, um, you know those little like Rembrandt or, or Van Gogh, you know, they tell you like, they give you colors, and this place has a number, one, two, and this has three, and they tell you one is blue, you know, and you paint it, and eventually you get Starry Night. Um, that That's not what you're supposed to be doing, but that's what you guys do. You guys trace it out, and then once you're done, you transfer Starry Night over here, and then you start coloring in. Okay, well, that is a blue, and that's a green, and I'm just going to put pieces together and hope and hope, without any thought of technique or blending, that this will eventually become this sexy man. No. Trace to educate yourself, not to take shortcuts. If you're taking shortcuts that damage your development, the only person you're hurting is you. Trust me. You may convince us that you're that you're really, you know, really good at drawing, but you're only lying to yourself. Why why limit yourself like that? Um <clears throat> All right. Tracing lines may not be accurate and will not help you practice form. Excellent. You are not looking at the form. Instead, you start looking at the lines. So when you're tracing your reference, trace your reference, la 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 la, transfer it over and start painting, you're not doing anything for yourself with regards to form. You are still depending on the lines. Tracing creates line dependency. Improper. Proper tracing creates line dependency and if line dependency is what we're trying to not be in order to reach form the beautiful form the lovely beautiful form that is all drawings that makes drawings look good if we're if we're dependent if our practices are all dependent on lines what will happen is that we will never reach this and we will continue hovering in this purgatory of dependency on lines so never trace with lines um, you increase your dependency on lines instead of tracing uh, uh, yourself, training yourself to see form. Thank you, Neurolo. That was perfect. Um, you won't learn by not a lot by doing it. Excellent, uh, because it does not give you information. It's flat. Um, hey, Ethuzimuzi, you've missed a lot, but I'm posting this on YouTube, so no, no worry. Um, there is no cheating if you don't get caught. <laughs> lines don't exist in real life. Thank you, Esma. Beautiful. Lines don't exist in your life, so you're using lines to make you um, create an intimate relationship with this form, and you're fooling yourself to think that you need the line in order to introduce yourself to this form. You don't need the line to introduce yourself to this form. You need the form to introduce yourself to this form. You need large brush. You, you want to use um, some reference, you know, lines over here and over here that'll help you kind of just, you can even use a grid line or the rule of thirds graph, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have to get that large brush, which is the opposite of skinny, tiny line brush, and just get those lines and stroke them in. All right, that's what, that's what does it. 
increasing the size of your brush. You cannot possibly learn. Even uh, perfecting your technique is going to be limited and crippled by depending on your on your tracing like that. So please don't trace in that way, but please do trace the proper way. Find the symmetry line. Find the axes. Um, throw a grid over it for love, for the love of God. Um, find uh, you know stuff that might assist you. So draw the horizontal lines as well for the symmetry and for the horizontal and vertical symmetry. Um, and then draw some outlines where you know there will be a cast shadow so you remember, so that you create the cast shadow. But remember, you can't draw that cast shadow properly unless you increase the size of your brush. So don't forget, after you draw these guidelines, you're gonna, your brush is going to have to go way back up again and um, start large to small. And that's what really will capture the best rendition, will create the best rendition, capture the form beautifully and elegantly. Um, and uh, it will make your painting look like almost painterly as well, which is really, really nice. You never want to just do photo study, I mean, uh, photorealism, and make that the most perfect, beautiful um, uh, photo, almost like fooling people into thinking it was a photo. There's nothing you can get from that, because there's no technique anymore. You're polishing too much. Don't polish too much. Give, a, give us a little bit of fun, and let's see the texture of your brush. Um, um, just got here and there's a sexy man staring at me. I don't mind that is all. <laughs> oh, I don't mind this at all. <laughs> uh, paint by numbers, yeah, that's terrible. I never use paint by numbers. They're terrible, terrible things. Um, how do you use the tracing of the photo in your actual painting process later on? You copy paste it onto your, so you've got your photo. You've got your symmetry lines. You're here to study, so don't give me that, oh, this is cheating. You're here to study. Do those do those lines for yourself. You know, trace this, trace this, trace this, 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 you know, whatever. And then you transfer that over where you're supposed to be painting. And that's all you get. This is all you get when you when you trace. Everything else has got to be all you. So you gotta throw the midtone on. Sorry, I'm gonna lose my lines. You gotta throw the midtone on and around your um around your uh, reference basically your your building dark to light and uh, everything else is uh, is you looking at your reference you gotta look back at your reference tracing makes you not look at your reference anymore like bad tracing good tracing still keeps you dependent on your reference because you're recording all this valid information into your visual library so you will always know how to draw a sexy man when you need to draw a sexy man and you can do this with everything you can do it with like a mech drawing, you can do it with drawing a female, you can do it with drawing clothing. You can trace the major axes of the form, but remember, the thing about lines is that <clears throat> um, you're going to have to replace them. So if you do use lines, you're going to have to replace them with form. You're going to have to replace them with an edge. Um, and an edge is really what speaks form. It's the only thing that speaks form. Um, so if you ever do use lines to trace out like a major cast shadow in the eyeball, Please remember you have to replace that with a shade and you got to get rid of the line. Don't keep the line. Um, and that's all that all that mumbo jumbo about copying properly. Let's talk about the light environment. The light environment was all dark so what you have to do is you find a reference that's light or you copy your reference bro. You do not change the light environment because this light environment was possible because of this room. It would look very different if the room was light, but you're recording a dark, an in the in a dark room face, in a light room. That's wrong. You're mixing light and you're overlapping different light and form situations. Never overlap different light and form situations together. You will have something that looks weird and not make sense physically. Please repeat that back at me. <laughs> Clown makeup. Is that a standard chalk brush, um, Mr. Brack? Yeah, I think so. I've edited it a lot and um, I've messed around with it a lot, a lot. So I'm not sure if it's still out there. <clears throat> so we really, really need for you to copy the light environment. As you see it in your photograph, don't freestyle. You are still learning. You are still a little hatchling and you cannot listen to crazy people when they tell you I don't know what I'm saying like don't talk to strangers <laughs> tracing is like talking to strangers uh, bad tracing good tracing is like um, not talking to strangers and stuff 
Yeah. No, I know what I'm talking about. Shut up. Alright, that cast shadow. I need to bring up the photograph. I can't copy from memory. Just like this. Cast shadow here. Thin out the brow. I don't think there's that much dark in his cheek. Yeah, that's way too much dark. There we go, starting to look a lot like him. You can go ahead and give him big vampire eyes, you know, you can have fun. Um, just make sure you're copying a reference, you're staying true to the form that the reference is expressing. So I'm not saying, like, worship this guy, I don't know who the fuck he is, he's got a stupid little earring, I think that's so lame. Um, sorry dude, I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, I'm not talking about him. It's not him that's the, that's, that's the, that's the star of the show. We're artists. We don't give a crap about who the star of the show is. The star of the show, the person, I mean. The star of the show is the form. We are looking at his face. Yeah, he's a person with a name out there somewhere. God bless him. But, um, but for us, our muse is the form. How the light plays on his face. That's our muse. <clears throat> That's our lover. That's who we look for in a photograph. And if you're not copying properly, if you're putting obstacles and hurdles and, and uh, you're sabotaging yourself with bad tracing, with zero planning, you're not going to record properly and you're doing the beautiful form that's showcased here a disservice. Okay. Sorry about anyone who has an earring that is in my audience right now. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you're a great person. <laughs> I just really never liked earrings. On a guy, they just it was so off. I'm sorry, I'm like traditional, I'm really lame that way. <clears throat> okay, I'm keeping your brush large. Uh, what does keeping your brush large help you do? Can anyone answer the question? His nose is becoming a Tom Cruise nose. <clears throat> That's all I can pretty much do for this painting for now. Um, shrink his hair while you're at it. Yeah, that's it's too much work. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's much closer to the reference now than before, because we've uh, I've seen I saw the lines and I'm trying to imitate them. The male gender signifiers, the core cast shadows and the core shadows, core lights. If you get those down, your image reads. Instantly. Instant, instant results. It's like form in a can. <laughs> wow, it's rag zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> My lover betrays me. It's the throwing shade. Um, <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I talk to strangers every day on the internets. Yeah, it's a freestyle, technically. It should have been okay on its own lighting background. Um, the anecdote went to a weird place very quickly. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It happens a lot. I'm so sorry. My lover betrays me. <clears throat> Makes it easier to clean. Focus on the major form. Create form. Focus more on the forms and the details. Um... To not go into detail and knowledge to create form. Yeah, big brush, big canvas, more perspective. Good. So um, it's <clears throat> focusing on the major form is right. That explains it. Uh, but uh, it's it's not really makes it easier to clean. Gemdis. That's not what it's about. Uh, big brush, big canvas, uh, more perspective. No, it's not perspective. Um, Enthusiasm. Big brush means you zoom out. Big brush means you are addressing the larger shades that would not have been visible if you zoomed in too early. It not, does not let you detail too early either because you won't feel like you can work with a tiny brush from that distance. Avoid zooming in as much as possible. You will work faster, you will complete the image faster, you will cover more space and you will bring in more paint with a larger brush. You will deal with tougher form that exists on the outside and the core shapes and the core shadows and the core physics. A large brush gets you closer to form. Perfectum. Will you critique my art? Anchete, um, can you, uh, I'm not sure how that's how you say it, I'm having fun with it. Um, can you link me your work, please? I might not have time, but I will try. Large brush helps you focus on creating form. Asma is on, on the game today, if that's the saying. <laughs> 
Think about Fig Farm more. Yes. Looks like he's doing duck face. Mm hmm. Formomatic. I saw the lines. I opened up my eyes. I saw the lines. <laughs> Where's that from, Draken? <clears throat> uh, so do I need 20 hours for painting? Uh, oh my god, it's about effectiveness, so I don't need 20 hours for painting. Exactly, Flo. Um, let's see what Anchetter. Um, <laughs> let's have a little bit of fun. What uh, we are not, what are we if not fun? All right. Um, so this person's got really funny face. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what to recommend. Honestly, I think you should really be going for the cayenne, cayenne, cyan, cyan, cayenne pepper. Um, over here, just wash the whole thing with that. And, uh, right, okay. And, um, and bring in some blues. To really bring out those those beautiful lines, we need to mess around a little with the color modes. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Fuck, <clears throat> that's gorgeous. Mm. You can overlay some textures, so um, you can. Uh, let's just bring in a let's bring a rock texture. Everyone likes rock texture. <laughs> Everyone owns like a file of rock textures. If they're working on uh, landscapes, this really might help you. All right, let's layer like a douche, as Peter Morbacher puts it. Texture like a douche. Okay, so I recommend um, this because now it feels like you've drawn on the wall and you're making a real statement about proper society and the abuse of independent art and how it's been commoditized, commodified, commodi commodification um, of popular art and pop media in, um, in, uh, in, in high class society. Um, something like that. I'm not sure. You see what I'm saying, guys? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a pool of knowledge. Feed from my pool of knowledge. Cancel. Flatten. <clears throat> Thank you for your beautiful painting. Um, it really opened my eyes on the corruptions of, of today's distribution of art, <clears throat> and uh, and how and how the rich folk accept the art but not the culture, and and how they pretend. This is stuff I learned from my comics and actually no, I learned it from my popular media arts class in university. How rich people um, accept. The culture, uh, they, they, they reject the culture, they reject the, the sort of popular culture, not refer to it as, um, you know, like not refer to it as a high class enough, but they still um, give the art some value that they create and create it, make it feel like a collect collector's item. So the culture becomes an actual commodity and they sell it. <clears throat> All popular artists like um, were, were at that point one time. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not very eloquent right now. So this is the dominant light source. This is where the light source is coming from. So what you need to do is create, find your find your primary light source. If you don't find your primary light source, I'm not even looking at the comments because I know you guys are making fun of me. Um, <laughs> if you don't find your dominant light source, what will happen is uh, you will not, you will get confused form. Form needs a one light source that is dominant. It will look very, very odd. It will look too symmetrical if there is more than one um, that, are, that is dominant. You need one dominant light source. And that's what's really going to help you create uh, that environment feeling. Alright, so just this little change and look what happened. Let's, let's look at this tiny little change that I made. I darkened the, the, uh, the, bo the bottom half, so I'm treating the bird. What shape the bird? What? <laughs> What shape is the board really? My board. What shape is my board? <clears throat> Can anyone give it? Give me the the shape, the actual shape that sits under the bird. Oh, Emmanuel, don't worry about it. 
art cultural appropriation. Art cultural appropriation. <laughs> I, smile, I, I, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like stumbling around like a dumbass trying to figure out how to say it, and then there it is. Um, Sarah Chris, I am but a humble beginner wishing to learn more about the arts. You are going to go places, Anchete. Machete. Machete. Shake your tail feather. Oval. Round ball of feathers. Burb is fear. No. Shame on all of you. It's not. Burb is not sphere. Burb is cylinder. Okay? If you know how to shade a cylinder, you know how to shade this board. <clears throat> what do I mean? I mean this. Okay. Blop. Blah, 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 blah. But it's not a perfect sphere either, and it's not a, a smooth sphere, it's made of feathers. So you know that the subsurface scattering is going to be limited to the outskirts, and you know it's almost, almost, almost a silhouette. So you know that the core shadow has to stretch across this, and that's pretty much what I did. I threw the shadow where it belonged. If there was a secondary light source, and there might be, um, let me see. <clears throat> And there might be a secondary, let me just turn off these goddamn ants. The secondary light source, whoa, holy Canada, um, would stretch just across the bottom here. Just enough that we can see that side of the sphere, I mean the cylinder, that sits under the shadow, the core shadow here. So basically what I'm saying is, if you, if you do your form studies and you do your homework, this will be very easy to understand. You've got the core light, and then you've got the shadow of the cylinder, right? And then you can get secondary light sources to reveal this bit, because a core shadow can be really flooding and we're losing a lot of the detail on the bird if we make this half too dark. So what we need to do is just reveal some of the areas of the bird of the board that are a little bit <clears throat> illuminated because of some reflection or something but not too light because you really just wanna show off the, the, the shadow and when you have two light sources that are clashing you get the clash line which stretches across and kinda just sits in between and the bird starts to look a lot more three-dimensional Oh, I fucked it up. One sec. We also need to show off some of the the texture on the bird. And you might want to illuminate the bird's eye just to you can break rolls like this. And some of that subsurface scattering has traveled across the head of the bird down towards the sides here. Very gently, we don't want to interrupt the core shadow. Core shadow is like a diva, you know, it's like an opera singer, a really overweight opera singer. Why are they always overweight? Does that make their voice nicer? I don't know. I think it's a bad image. For little girls dreaming about being opera singers one day. Or little boys. Alright, so I'm just giving a. I should zoom out. Bad idea. <clears throat> just giving it a little bit more texture. And then I'm gonna darken. So some of these trees, you can really make them lighter because the lightness is there. So um, the light is there to make these trees a little bit um, lighter. So it would be something like this. The objects in the background are a little bit illuminated because the light is flooding in. And then the midground becomes silhouetted, so the trees in the midground become silhouetted a little bit. And you might want to change the color. Yeah. So these trees need to be a silhouette because they're standing in the way of the light. This tree especially. 
Okay, and then we've got the lower half. I'll use, um, come on. I'll use a gradient tool. Probably on burn or multiply. There we go. And when you erase away from the clock, which is a reflective material, you have to erase along a, a reflection point. Meaning that only that part got the reflection on it. The light traveled across the reflective material in a, in a straight line. Just like this. And you can have a little bit on the sides. The secondary bits. And every reflective material has with it a reflective glow. So that is looks something like this. Color dodge, a brighter, something like that. And we need gold, something like this. Actually whiter. something like this. And then finally there's the staging itself. You need to make this entire um, image more centered. So uh, there, the composition was a bit leaning to the side. You need to do something like that. Filter, I'm going to just adjust the contrast just a little bit. Increase the contrast. So this is this is this is how we create a light environment. You have to choose your primary light source first. Once you choose your primary light source, you can determine the cylinders and the spheres and the cubes and, and the pyramids and the core shadows that they have on them. After you determine those core shadows, it becomes very easy to know what to do with the secondary light source because you know the side that's getting all that dark. So the secondary light source comes in. There's also a problem that you had with staging that I just fixed, and then there was a texture problem, treating the feathers as feathers and creating enough subsurface scattering, and treating the metallics as metallics. Um, you need a large enough glow for the background, and you need to defuse some of the background lights and know when you're doing a silhouette and when you're not doing a silhouette. Be more aware of the silhouette um, when, when it is there. Um, and I think that's it. Before, after. And if you need secondary light source, find a way to create some secondary light source. You can be creating some fireflies. Let's make some fireflies that, um, that give off uh, the form, that give the form back to the bird. So the bird is in a big, massive shadow, and this, these fireflies here are going to reveal the bird's um, reflection, or the bird's, the side of the sphere, the cylinder. Come on. Stupid fucking Photoshop. Okay. Um, outer glow. Something like that, I guess. Just wish it wasn't so gross. I think they'd fix this. Wish it was more feathered. Um. Okay. I guess this one works just fine. 
and you can have that break off the uh, object Asterize. you can have that kind of interrupt the core shadow just a little bit and with those floaty lights you can do a much better job than I did uh, you can bring in some of those rim lights across the the, beer, the beak and the feathers, some of the feathers can get that the side feathers here can get a little bit of that and then you can get that shape back to the bird <clears throat> this I recommend, I do not recommend how I did it before where it seemed like the bird itself was a light source he wasn't involved in a strong enough light environment alright so let's see what everyone's saying um, Anjata has more. Ah, oh, beautiful, amazing. This this represents the human condition um, in post World War One, <laughs> post World One um, depression, where uh, men to reinstate the patriarchy dressed in bright colors and women were expected to wear great colors, reminiscent of the natural um, order of birds, um, because men could no longer use their income. <laughs> To, uh, to to be suitors instead they dress very brightly um, it is a um, an artifact of historical <laughs> I don't fucking know I hate people who talk like that you can always go over with soft brush instead of using layers yeah I tune in with the luminous purple on the wing a bit also um, but that's just me uh, that was a pretty good critique thank you Flo de Delt Thanks everyone for coming. Have a great day. I hope today helped you. If you guys missed today's class, again, go to YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.